What's up, everybody? Today is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, January the 25th. I know y'all see me sometimes look down and say, what day is it? It is Wednesday. Today is indeed Wednesday, January the 25th, 2023. I see you, Adrian. Adrian was sitting in the queue for a long time. I saw you. We were able to see you in there watching that premiere countdown. I see you, Pastor Alex Williams. What is it like in Florida? Because it's snowing here in Ohio. I see you, Jeffrey Allen James, Robert Holman. Good morning. I see you, Dr. Antoinette. Good morning to you. Dr. Antoinette, answer this question. Is it true that y'all haven't had any snow? I was reading something about that East Coast not getting anything since, I guess, in, since December. So let me know if that's the truth. I see you, Marion Jackson. Come on in here, y'all. We have a lot of news. Oh, y'all see how that Pastor Alex Lanier is in the 70s? We don't care, really. Um, but no, we do care. We probably all want to move there. Um, so enjoy that. Dr. Antoinette, no snow. They, they're saying, and I'm like, okay, but they say there's no climate change, but okay. I see you, Kim, uh, Kim Miller Edmondson, coming up in here. I always want to flip that for some reason. Um, wow, not in Baltimore. That's crazy. Yeah, happy hump day to you. Um, uh, Adrian says she she loves being in the classroom early. I see you, Latrice Jones. Good morning to you. All right, y'all. Again, today is Wednesday, January the twenty fifth, twenty twenty three. I can't get the date right. Right. I am your host, Gail Dudley, and it's time for some news headlines and some things that are going on in and around this world um, on this Wednesday. I want to start off real quick. Um, I am so grateful to all those who have been sponsoring spots. Um, and if this is you, again, it can be a product. It can be a book. It can be a service. It could be your business. It could be whatever. And I understand people are getting business from these promos. So we're going to just let you know you can do a placement right here on News in Motion of your business. We have a... a, a $50 per placement. For more information, you can email News in Motion and say, how can I get one of those? Um, we want you to do it yourself, but if you need some help, then the price changed and we will help you put that promo together um, just to get your business out there. But yeah, I'm hearing that people are getting business from these promos and it never goes away. And just think y'all, although we see it here on the lives on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, on all the podcasts and audio uh, listeners, they are hearing the information and they're able to write it down. So we just want to let you know that. So thank you. And Kenny Stanley is saying good morning. And y'all, he's in the green room too. And he's talking about good morning. Thank you, Isaiah. All right, y'all, Council on Foreign Affairs. Nope, I'm not going there yet. I'm going to back up. So we got to talk about these Oscars. And yeah, y'all know I get the press releases now. We got the badge. We can get in there and watch all this turn out virtually. Um, I see you, Deborah Snead. We can also, I was actually in the virtual room on yesterday while you know everything was going on. And it was amazing how, um, if you just really tune in and see what they're doing, you can see people in the audience, you can see them and hear the uh, production people saying, call up Jamie Lee Curtis. I was like, you just calling her up? And then you can hear that over there if you go over to that room, all virtual. And it's like, wow, COVID allowed virtual to go to another level. So that was just so Wonderful. Yes, Latrice Jones, it's a wonderful opportunity to market um, businesses. You're absolutely right. So y'all, let me just go through this. First of all, I have to give it up. Black Panther is in there. Uh, Wakanda forever. But I was a little sad that the woman King and Teal received nothing. But I'm going to just go through this, y'all. The 95th Oscar nominations were announced yesterday, and the Oscars are set to air live on March the 12th on ABC in Los Angeles, California. I'm not going to go through all, I got them all, but I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, I just want to pull out, you know, what really pertains to us. Performance by actress in a supporting role. Y'all, let's pray for Angela Bassett in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And I just want y'all to know, it's not that they've been nominated and they can sit back and put their feet up. They now have to go work it. So she now has to go work it to get people to vote for her. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? This is what we do? This is how they do it all along. I'm a transparent moment. Transparent moment. All along, I thought people voted and that was it. 
I didn't know they had to go like knock on doors and get people to vote for them. Like this is a production, just like being politicians. They have to go out and campaign to get the room. Like what is going on? So that's happening. Then achievement and costume design, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Ruth Carter. So shout out to Ruth Carter for that. Um, achievement in makeup and hairstyling. Uh, we have Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Camille, Friend, and Joel Harlow. So shout out to them. Achievement in music. Hello, somebody. And she's coming to the Super Bowl. Um, written for the motion picture. This is the original song, Lift Me Up. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Y'all know that is by Rihanna. Um, and let me give you the whole thing because um, we have to because we signed the thing. Um, music by Tim's, Rihanna, Ryan Cougar. Kugler, excuse me, and Ludwig, I cannot say this person's last name, but it's G-O-R-A-N-S-S-O-N, and lyrics by Tim's and Ryan Kugler. Got to give all the information. So that's what's happening. Like I was up there like with my ball gown on telling y'all these names, and I would have said the same thing. I don't know how to pronounce your name, and I would have spelled it out like I just did. So I think I gave you all of those. Oh, nope, there's one more. Um, achievement in virtual effects, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, um, Goffrey uh, Bowman, Craig Hammock, R. Christopher White, and Dan Suttick. So congratulations to them. And then just a little bit about the Academy. The Academy of Motion Pictures, Art and Sciences is a global community of more than 10,000 of the most accomplished artists artists, excuse me, filmmakers, and executives working in film. In addition to celebrating and recognizing excellence in filmmaking through the Oscars, the Academy supports a wide range of initiatives to promote the arts and sciences of movies, including public programming, screenings, publications, educational outreach, ex um, exhibitions, and more. I want to say this, and I don't know if Devante is on this morning, but I want to say this. Inside that virtual room, and y'all, this is so good, and I want to share this with all of you. This is what we do here on News and Motion. Inside that virtual room, when I saw all of these things, because you can ask questions, I said, wait, wait, wait. You give money to these things, you promote these programs, and they started giving me information. So listen, I was like, we're ready. Publications getting ready to promote something. Hello, somebody. Y'all, public programming, we can put something together. And so, of course, me. I said, y'all talk about politics. Y'all want to programming for politics? Yeah, y'all, this blackface was asking all those questions yesterday. A educational outreach, exhibitions, screenings, movies. Y'all, we can all be a part of this. Y'all, listen, listen, again, we're coming to the table. So, yep, y'all, that's my media media contact. I don't know if y'all can see that. And all of that information for the Oscars. So that's the Oscars. So congratulations to Black Panther, Wakanda forever, and all that they're doing. All right, let me get to the Council on Foreign Affairs. We haven't talked about this in a long time, and I still get their press releases every day. So I pulled out, y'all, this rights group called on Meta to boost content moderation in Africa. Hey, what's up, Tracy Burns? Long time no see. Rudders is reporting digital rights campaigners, including Access Now, called for Facebook's parent company, Meta, to hire more content moderators and increase moderators' pay after the social media giant's main contractor in Africa said it would no longer screen posts for harm, harmful content. They're like, uh-uh, that ain't right. And they want there to be some sort of action put in place for that. And I, I say, yeah, let's get that done. Also in Brazil, y'all, the government declared a medical emergency, and BBC is talking about this, due to malnutrition among the indigenous Yanomi community, uh, and authorities airlifted 16 people to the hospital because of malnutrition. I see you, uh, y'all, the prophetess, Overflow, Anita Dawson, y'all need to check out uh, Overflow, Overflow, listen, on Fridays at 8.30 a.m. right here on Facebook, y'all need to check her out. All right, y'all, listen, I want to be forthright, I want to be forthcoming right about now and share with you all this transparent moment because I just think you should know. You, I think you should know. 
I was going through some of my files and papers yesterday and I had a certified lab work results in my file and it said certified and I just want everybody to know and if I need to send it to the archives I'll get it to the archives as soon as possible y'all everybody got documents I'm like Obama come on go check through your houses now however many you have your boats your cars your books whatever if you have some turn them over please turn them over because once you have them it's gonna be a whole new ball game yeah but let's keep in let's keep this in the forefront of our mind one obstructed justice and was trying to do some business deals and was flushing papers down the toilet. Those are all facts and known. The others, they just got papers. People packed up stuff. And remember, Pence was in an interview where he says, no, mm -mm, I don't have any documents. Bam, you have some. Y'all, so what's really going on? Are people really going in people's houses and planning these things? What is happening? What made him go through his boxes? What made him have his attorneys go through his boxes? What is going on? Like something's happening. So documents with classified markings was discovered in from former Vice President Mike Pence, Indiana residence last week, his lawyer said the latest. Now, this was last week. We didn't hear about this till yesterday. The latest in a string of recoveries of papers meant to be treated with utmost sensitivity from the homes of current and former top U.S. officials. Now, y'all listen. One of y'all have this ability. Uh -huh. Victoria Murray, if you're on here, take this business, go to the White House, to the government, to the AG office, whatever, and say, let me put together a, a system that you have to check. Like, you know, when you're in the library, you got to check out books and you got to bring them back. And if you don't bring them back, they're sending you an email saying, hey, where's that book? That. Y'all don't do that. And what, let's talk about the, the National Archives. They ain't off the, they're not off of it either. All right, National Archives, you're supposed to have a record of every document. You've been missing documents since Joe Biden was a senator. Who's not doing their job? Y'all, there's something, you can't even, I've been to the White House a few times. Mm -hmm. One, my own child received an award as a young entrepreneur from Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, but we were in the White House side. We were in, also in the Eisenhower. We were there. Listen, they vet the mess out of us to get through the gate. Like they tell us a series of questions and you have to answer them. I'll never forget. And I may have shared this before here on News Emotion. They said to me, what's your grandfather's middle name? I said, well, number one, he's deceased. And they went, I said, number two, he really doesn't have a middle name. He made one up and he used it. All of that was in their system. Now you're going to ask me all that. You're going to know all that. And you don't know some top secret or classified documents are missing. Come on, seriously, y'all. Come on. What is out there that we're in jeopardy? Something dangerous could happen because y'all flying around and, and having on the uh, fireplace mantle classified documents. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Let me see what some of you all are saying. What's up, Regina? Anita says, turn the documents over. Kim Edmondson said, I have files. Jeffrey Allen James says, if they find documents in Obama's garage, then we would really have problems. Uh, Mike Nicholson said, Russia gets all of our secrets, Marion Jackson, but the difference in documents being found and documents being taken. Um, yeah, Tracy Burr says, I agree. Who is not checking their records and telling people to bring those files back? Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. I'm like, what is happening? All right, y'all right here in Ohio, there's corruption. There's corruption in Ohio, the state I live in. Y'all, a historic trial began in Ohio this week that alleges top Republicans in the state accepted bribes from the power company First Energy. First of all, let's talk about Republicans. They always in a scandal. They're always in a scandal. And it's always around money, money and power. They're always in a scandal. Come on, y'all. Democrats have been in scandals. But these Republicans, they in some deep scandals, bribery, things that are going on. Experts says the corruption has led to higher bills for customers. You the reason why my bill's high? Less clean energy and more plant warming emissions. Similar cases occurred in Arizona, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida over the past decade. So, y'all, this is happening. One of the defendants, the former Ohio House Speaker, Larry Householder, um, <laughs> it's just us 
just even his name is like, mm -hmm, what you holding on to? Is charged with one count of racketeering and faces up to 20 years in prison. Uh, uh, what's his name? Larry Householder and four other men are thought to have received, get this job, get this job, over 60 million uh, dollars in exchange for passing House Bill 6, which gave $1.4 billion in customer-funded bailout to two nuclear plants controlled by First Energy. Say what? We do that? So y'all, seriously, I say clean the house all of them, state level, national, just clean them all. And let's start doing some new vetting because y'all Georgie boy is still off the, off the chain. Georgie boy is off the chain. Let me see what y'all saying. Good morning, Mike Nicholson. He says, I wouldn't take nothing home from the White House. <laughs> Not even a pen. Like when they were giving us stuff, when we were there, I was seriously saying this, they know we taking this. They know they they know we got this. You know, even in the restroom when they have the like the hand towels and their paper, you supposed to wash your hands, you know, dry them off in some way. And people are like, oh, here's y'all better throw that away. Y'all better don't put that in your purse. <laughs> don't put nothing in. I don't care if you did dry your hands off. Put it in the trash can. <laughs> Let's get it back. We ain't taking nothing. So y'all, it's just really interesting. He also says, Mike Nicholson says, that's what uh, this has been about, money. I don't trust politicians, period. You wouldn't trust me if I ran, Mike? Is that what you're telling me? Latrice said, let me send these bills to householder. <laughs> we should all, that was fab, that's brilliant. Latrice, we should collect all of our bills and throw them, send them to his address. Mm -hmm. uh, Adrian on YouTube said, didn't one of them commit suicide? That's guilt there. Hmm. You got to tell me which one I have to look into that. All the bills. So yeah, that's what's happening, y'all. Uh, y'all, the uh, Justice Department, get this, they sue Google over digital advertising dom dominance. And this is AP reporting. The Justice Department in eight states filed an antitrust suit against Google on yesterday, seeking to shatter its alleged monopoly on the entire uh, ecosystem of online advertising as a hurtful burden to advertisers, consumers, and even the U.S. government. Yeah, it's very interesting that they're suing them because I'm very mindful of what post I boost on any of these things. And I'm like, and I never see the returns that they say you're going to receive. And then your advertisement, when I did it years ago, when your advertisement, you find out that it's on the bottom, depending upon if you pay. If you pay $15, maybe one person may see it or people who it doesn't matter. So it's really interesting that there's now going after this. Um, on YouTube, same thing, the, the Google AdSense, all of those. So they're coming for them. Um, they're saying, um, Attorney General Merrick Garland said, monopolies threatens the free and fair market upon which our economy is based. They stifle innovation, they hurt producers and workers, and they increase costs for consumers. And that's where you're seeing some of these higher prices as well. It goes on to say the suit, um, the suit, the latest legal action brought by the government against Google accused the company of unlawfully monopolizing the way ads are served online by excluding competitors. The same thing is happening on Amazon. If you're not out there um, getting the reviews, which is, a, they say there's a policy, you cannot to ask people to go and give you a great review. But people do that, trying to get their algorithm. Everything is based on this algorithm. So if you're not involved and you're not getting the reviews like on Amazon, it pushes you to the bottom. So it's an ongoing game. Like there's times like when my books are selling, for example, and my books are selling or, or and they're doing really well. Let's say Beth Moore has a book out and her book is selling. And you know how Amazon will then tell you, these are other books that you should consider. If your book is up there and selling, there's been times that when Beth Moore's book or Joyce Meyer's book is selling, mine, uh, my one or two, like um, the book on fear or the book on prayer, it'll show up underneath because the algorithm has shifted. It's all a game. It's all a game. So they're coming after people. So y'all, this lawsuit was filed in federal court in Alexandria, Virginia. It demands that Google divest itself of the businesses of buyer, seller, and auctioneer of digital display advertising 
advertising, remaining with search, its core business, and other products and services, including YouTube, Gmail, and cloud services. So a lot is going on there. I'm bringing Kenny in here in a few moments, but let me go over two more things and I'll bring Kenny in. Then I have a story to tell y'all I want to talk about and hopefully we'll be out of here. Y'all, woman shoots terminally ill husband dead in a Florida hospital. Associated Press is talking about this. Y'all, a woman who fatally shot her terminally ill husband inside Florida hospital was taken into custody over the weekend. Ellen Gillen told police her husband, Jerry Gillen, had been ill for some time and they together had planned the shooting. She now faces a first degree mur murder charge, but they say that she has some sort of um, a notarized piece of paper that says that they did this together. So it's just really interesting to see how this is going to unfold. And I just got to say, I didn't want to, but I have to say it. Elon, 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 when are you going to get tired and wake up? Listen, Associated Press is reporting this as well. Elon Musk testifies in the Tesla tweet trial. Say that real fast. Um, and so he goes to court. <laughs> yesterday, this week, I think it was yesterday, in San Francisco to testify in a class action lawsuit filed by Tesla investors. His own investors, like, oh, no, we're coming for you, buddy. Um, allegedly, he misled them in that 2018 tweet, which I had, I had talked about that on here, I believe it was last week or two weeks ago. Elon Musk said that um, it was important for Jewers. Now, he's, you know, some of these things are televised. Just check it out. He's, this is happening. He says to the Jewers in this like almost like just begging manner, he says, I, uh, I felt that the funding was secure. I want y'all to know I felt that the funding was secure due to my ownership of SpaceX stock alone. Really, you felt that? You now got discernment. You discerned you should buy Twitter. That ain't going too well for you. You discern that you go over to Twitter and Tesla's going to be okay. Your stock is dropping every day, dude. You discern. So you just felt that. But that also said this to me. And I want to ask you all this question for bringing Kenny Stanley. Talked about sports. And I don't know how you're going to talk about them boys, but they lost. But anyway, we want to talk about... Um, you thought this was secure through the ownership of your space X stock. So does that mean your SpaceX S your space X stock isn't what you say it is? Are you having does it appear that you have money on paper, but you don't have the paper? What was really going on here? All right, Kenny, come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on in here, Kenny. Come on in here. Really? Talk about them boys. For real, girl. <laughs> That's For real. What? That's what I said, Kenny. That's what I said. I already told him on Monday that, you know, your boy's lost. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've been getting it from everywhere. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I, hope, I, I do hope all your physicals and stuff went very well for you after your surgery. I let everybody know you was going to be away, but that you'll be back today. Yeah, they went good. At least we made the playoffs. At least I can't. I don't know what happened to Pittsburgh, but we made the playoffs. So we good. Oh, now, now he's going to throw it to the Steelers. And if y'all can see Isaiah's face in the green room, Isaiah's like, did he go there? Man, wow. Well, I got all to be the right, only one it. to get it. So here we go. <laughs> Hey, good morning, News and Motion family. I love having fun. You can't you, you say you can't have fun and laugh. That was fun. Hey, I'm sick of Dak Prescott since we're talking about my boys. I'm sick of Dak. I'm sick of us going to the playoffs and we just looking just to make it to the playoffs. We got to start winning the game. This is crazy to me. I am sick of Dak. But with that being said, the NFC and the FC championship games are set for, are set on Sunday. Hey, on Fox at 3 p.m., you got those San Francisco 49ers who beat us again. Uh, they go to Philadelphia. Now, this is where I'm become a 49er fan. Uh, I need Philly to get beat because I can't take it from the Philadelphia fans. They killing me. They killing me. Uh, so I'm looking for the 49ers. I want to see them in the Super Bowl. Uh, then on CBS at 6:30, uh, the Bengals head to Kansas City. Uh, Looking for their fourth win in a row against Kansas City. What's going to happen? I got a feeling the Bengals and the San Francisco 49ers are going to match up in the Super Bowl, which would be a good game. 
in the NBA last night, uh, the Heat over the Celtics, uh, 98 to 95. Uh, the New York Knicks beat the Cavs, uh, 105 to uh, 103. Can I say this about the New York Knicks? It looked like they done found their team and then it made a turnaround. I haven't seen the Knicks play like this in a long time. Uh, we got the Washington Wizards by one over the Dallas Mavs, 127-126. And then the uh, L.A. Clippers. Uh, I do believe they're still the top team in the building that they share with the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. The Clippers beat the Lakers last night 133-115. to uh, 115. But LeBron James did drop 46 in the loss, and LeBron is now 178 points away from from the scoring record that he will overtake Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His record is stood for a long time. Uh, Saturday, I want to talk about. I'm just I'm just gonna give you a heads up, Saturday. I want to talk about Ed Reed and Bethune Cookman. But it's not just Ed Reed and Bethune Cookman. I want to talk about HBCUs and athletics. This is this is crazy. I mean, I'm all, all for HBCUs, but we got to find out what's going on, where this money is going, and what's happening, especially with the athletic department. But we're gonna talk about that Saturday. That's sports for me today. That was a quick rundown. We're gonna go back to Gail so she can keep crack, so she can keep casting shade on my Cowboys. But that's sports. That's it for me. Game over. Everybody have a blessed weekend. Listen, listen, Kenny, listen, you getting, you getting drawn. You got Latrice Jones saying, oh no, he didn't. Mike Nicholson wants to know what boys you talking about. Uh, she's also, Latrice also going to buy you a Philadelphia jersey just to tease you. Uh, <laughs> they coming, they coming for you. They, they coming for you. I think if hey. I was in your, in the same uh, place as you, I think y'all be fighting right about now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it's it, just crazy. It's all fun. At least I didn't run over my TV. So oh, I saw that. That's just crazy. <laughs> That's just crazy. And Latrice <laughs> says your topic on Saturday sounds like it's going to be off the chain. Y'all, y'all really should tune in on Saturday at six thirty um, p.m. <clears throat> right here on this News and Motion station, also on his Facebook page, and just check it out. Check out what's happening, and also YouTube. Right, Kenny? I think you're on YouTube. Yes, yeah, well. on YouTube. So yeah, we gotta we gotta really look at that. But Kenny, thank you. But uh, mm -mm, they coming for you. I know they coming. That's okay. I can take it. And, and and Mike Nicholson said you just can't. He says you gotta ride with your boys. He said oh, I'm riding with him. Find that one. He said you gotta ride with, with your boys. He said, life. he said you are doing a lot of talking. Ride with your team out off the playoffs. <laughs> I'm riding with them. They, they, I'm sitting at home. They sitting at home like me. Oh, my well. brother-in-law, I saw my sister yesterday real quick. My brother-in-law went up to my sister, who's a Dallas Cowboy fan, my youngest sister. And uh, we were actually at a, our uncle's um, funeral. But he came up to my sister and said, um, uh, Swan's Cleaners, um, they're giving free coupons to clean all those Cowboys paraphernalia. He was being funny. We just lost it in the middle of the, in the, middle of the funeral. <laughs> so that's what's happening. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, y'all talking about algorithm. Let's hit some likes, some love, some share, something so I can get the algorithm up going here. Again, it's just really to alert people and let them know we're here. Also, I want to share this with y'all. I think I told y'all yesterday, y'all, the accomplishments are, are through the roof. Um, a lot of people, when they heard me talk about the numbers and so forth yesterday, they were like, you may not see me on the, the chat of Facebook because I'm over here on the podcast because I can get the kids out the house and have my earbuds in and be listening. So people, just because you think, oh, nobody's viewing over here like they did over the past two years, they're on a different platform. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So we're really excited about that. All right, y'all. So here's my next story before I go to the inspirational message. And y'all, this is really happening. HuffPost is reporting. This is coming straight from the writer, David Moyle. Uh, y'all, M&Ms. Yeah. This is how crazy our world has become. m and M spokes candies after woke uproar. They have decided to, uh, in uh, an, an indefinite pause mm -hmm, from the cartoon spokes candy. Didn't y'all like them on TV? I like them, but they're like, they're going to pause it. 
Um, it has used this uh, in ads since the mid 1990s, according to a message on the company's Twitter account. Apparently, in response to what can only be described, I'm giving you his direct quote, David Moore's direct quote. Well, a meltdown uh, by conservatives like Tucker Carlson. The company said it realized that even candy shoes can be polarizing. Last year, the candy company revamped the spokes candies to create a world where everyone feels they belong in society and is inclusive, as today's reported at, uh, at the time. Some of the changes, including swapping out the green M&M's go-go boots with the cool laid-back sneakers to reflect her effortless confidence. And this is all being written by David Moore. I'm just co quoting him. When those changes first occurred, Tucker Carlson was mad that the new design made the green M&M look less sexy, according to Forbes. I'm like, are we serious right now? We're really having this conversation? Last week, the Fox News host once again criticized Mars um, uh, and the green M&M, the brown M&M, and the new purple M&M. So the company announced it would donate some of the profits from the sales of those colors to organizations that support a variety of professional pursuits by women. Hello, women. Contact the Mars Incorporated and see how you can get this, because I'm really trying to get them on News emotion Motion or Politics and Pros. We need to talk about this. Now, Tucker Carlson wasn't pleased with the woke M&Ms, and he's gone off on Fox News just ragging on these Spokes candies and their color and what they wear and if they look sexy enough or not. I'm like, yeah, you're right, Marion Jackson. He needs help. Put that one up there, Isaiah. Tucker Carlson needs help. So the green Eminem got her boots back, but apparently is now um he's saying these are this is Tucker Carlson's quotes. The green Eminem got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe he said. He's so racist and cruel and just, ugh. So they're shutting him down. He also talked about the purple M&M being plus sized. What? Now he's talking, now he's body shaming. He's body shaming. He's, he's, he has issues. He has no sensitivity. And we're going to stand up here from news and motion for everyone. We're going to stand with our, our uh, uh, lesbian uh, friends and family. We're, they're people. They're people. They're people. We're going to stand with the plus size women. They're people. We're going to stand and be inclusive of everyone. We're all people just trying to do what we're trying to do. And we are glad about it. And we're going to make a difference. This is what's going on. And this received a lot of press. So yes, Eminem's reference, the go-go books controversy and the uh, plus size um Eminem in its statement. It says, in the last year, we've made some changes to our beloved spokes candies. The statement read, we weren't sure if anyone would notice, and we definitely didn't think it would break the internet. But now we get it. Even a candy's shoes and their size can be polarizing, which was the last thing M&Ms wanted since we're all about bringing people together. Y'all, this is what is happening. It's happening. It's happening. So I want to move into our inspirational message. And before I do that, uh, Latrice Jones asked a question. Is Tucker Carlson married? I have no idea. Robert Holman says, is this real? Yes, it's real. You can go to M&M's. I think it's under Mars Incorporated um, to see their tweet, their Twitter, their tweet, excuse me. Kim Evans said, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's happening. Dr. Antoinette said people were mad over the cover M&M's on one package. I'm losing it. Um, I need to bring this down. I want to read this. Uh, people were mad over the covers M&Ms on one package being all females. It's candy people. And if you need the shoes of M&Ms for that, go and make several appointments with the therapist. That's good. Jeffrey Allen James said he had a thing for raisins um, if he feels this way about M&Ms. Mike Nicholson said he's just mad because he looks like young Mr. Magoo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't do that. Frank Clay says, um, love the inclusion thing. Show is the way, a show is the way, Gail. Yep, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. See, see, I believe in all people, all shapes, all sizes, all nationalities, all backgrounds, all sexual orientations. We can hang out. Let's have a conversation. <clears throat> and maybe that's something we can have right here on News and Motion. Uh, Hester, Cl Hester Jackson says, should we be talking about this or shut him down by not giving him a platform? Great, great question. Great question. The reason we shared it here, because <clears throat> we, we want to have the conversation um, without highlighting Tucker, Car Tucker Carlson, of course, but we got to tell everybody who the crazo is. Um, but to say, okay, let's, let's support M&Ms. Let's go out and buy them. Let's go buy them up <clears throat> so um, we can shut them down that way. Marion Jackson says, uh, they are people. We shouldn't discount anyone because the person you discount today may be the person you will need tomorrow. Absolutely. And then Mike said, they're coming after now. Now and later is next. They'll cite it, uh, it as a time paradox. So that's what we have. So I want to go into the inspirational message. Um, and I want to talk about our thought life. I want to talk about the thought life. And I'm back in Philippians, y'all. Think on these things, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Verse nine, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So powerful. So even with what I just shared, and I shared that intentionally, I shared that because we need to be aware of it. I share that because we need to know what's happening. So when we run into things and we're looking for things, we're wondering why things are changing or our children is wondering why things have changed. We share these things so that we can bring it back around and say, okay, let's focus on what's true. Let's focus on what's noble. Let's focus on what is right. Let's focus on what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. Let's, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things, not all the other stuff. Y'all know I had to go to the message. Yep, I love it too, Latrice. Y'all know I had to go to the message to pull it out. It says, summon it all up, friends. I said, you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things filling your minds and meditating on things, true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realize. Do that. And God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent Harmonies. Let's break that down real quick and we're out of here. Listen, we gotta we we have the choice of what we're gonna fill our minds with. We can choose to fill our minds with all the craziness that's happening. We can sit here and chew on it and get angry about it, or we can say, okay, let me meditate on what's true. Now, what what about this is true? And let's take MMs. That's why I put it behind. That's why I did the run of the show the way I did. Because let's take the M&M's. Like them. I like them with the peanuts in them. All right. So that's true. That's true for me. I like them. I like the purple. I like the green. I don't even think you can taste the colors if you ask me. I just like the nuts inside of them. So that's what's true. They're reputable. They've been around for a long time. That's true too. It's authentic candy from what I can tell. Whatever authentic candy tastes like, that's true. You know, hey. It's, to me, one of the best, not the worst. That's true. I, I like it. So y'all saying, you put candy in there? Yeah, but I don't want to put us in there. We got to think about, okay, what am I going to meditate on? What am I going to chew on? Am I going to chew on the things and areas that I lack? Or am I going to chew on my successes and my accomplishments and my victories and my dreams and where I want to go? So what's true about all that? What's noble? What's reputable? What's authentic about the work that we do, the, the ministry that we do, the lives that we live, the people that we come in contact with, that authentic side there? What's compelling? What's gracious? Let's offer grace and mercy today. Hello, somebody. Um, the best, not the worst. Why are we focusing on the worst? Why? Why? And I'm going to use the football. I'm going to use the sports for a moment right here. Why are we focusing on the boys who lost and not the Niners who won? 
Isn't that interesting? We give more play to beating up people that, that didn't do too well, but they, they accomplished something. They made it there, right? But why are we doing that? But we go to the worst. We go to the one who had the L and not the one who won. Isn't that interesting that we do that? Are we programmed to do those types of things? We have to reverse those things because it's a mindset. And, and we have to uh, look at what's beautiful, not ugly. Somebody can wear something like, I don't like that. Well, first of all, did we ask you if you liked it? And number two, why didn't we say, you know what? Let's focus on what's beautiful, the, the, beauty, the beauty that comes out your mouth, the beauty that you wear, the beauty of how grace, how you've graced the room or the space. Let's focus on the beauty, not the ugly. Let's not look at the time that you had an ugly attitude. Let's look at the time that your, your attitude was beautiful and it was uh, uh, whole, holistic and just whole and healthy. Let's look at that. Things to praise, not things to curse. We always want to declare and decree something and say, like, get you out of here. Well, let's declare and decree the beauty. <clears throat> let's declare and decree the praise and the victory. Seriously, seriously. I, I, you know, why do we do the things that we do? And again, the message brings us out. It says, put into practice what you learn from me. See, we can't put some things into practice because we haven't learned anything. Hello, somebody. Yes, I just said it. But if we read this, let's put into practice the things that we have learned from him. And he goes on to say what you heard and saw and realized, what you heard and saw with your own eyes, not what somebody else has seen. And you realize these things. Do that. And God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Listen, y'all, that jumped off at me. That jumped off at me. Goes back to what I was saying yesterday about be anxious for nothing. It's not worth it to be anxious because you're only messing up your own self. So when I kept reading that, I said, this thought life, when I went back to that whole thing with that Eminem's piece, I said, this is going to flow right into this. We have the power to change our mindset and to focus on those things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to, to praise, not the things to curse, and then put those things into practice. All right, John said a whole lot. Until tomorrow, I am Gail Dudley. It has been a joy to be with you today. Thank you so much for allowing me to be uh, spend a part of your uh, day with you. Y'all know what I say, stay well. And remember, make some bold moves. I'm out. Yeah.